Hi, this is Auto House Hamilton TV, and I'm James. If you believe everything that you encounter on the internet, and as Sir Donald Bradman so famously said, only half of what you read on the internet is true, then it's a miracle that anybody with a water-cooled 911 succeeds in driving to the end of their street without their car collapsing in a heap due to IMS failure, scored cylinder bores, de-chunks in cylinder walls, or lack of oil from leaking rear main seals. On the other hand, the same interweb is full of glowing admiration for air-cooled 911s. But the truth is that air-cooled 911s also had their share of issues. All of these issues have a common underlying cause, which is that Porsche always try to change the way they did things. And for all the flack that the 911 gets for maintaining a recognizable version of a design that started over 50 years ago, there has always been evolution, steady change under the skin, even when there has been no outward change. So here are 10 issues with air-cooled 911s that would have had internet experts pounding their keyboards into powder. Number one, short wheelbase 911s will kill you if you attempt to drive around a corner. It's uncertain how much of the early short wheelbase 911's reputation for fearsome handling was due to road testers expecting something more like a 356, how much was due to mid-60s tire technology, and how much was due to the car itself, but the reputation persists. Number two, magnesium engine cases turn porous. Magnesium is light and easily machined, but over time it lets oil escape to the outside world. Number three, but don't worry about that because your magnesium case 911 will stop running long before all the oil has escaped when the head studs pull themselves out of the case. This was most likely caused by different thermal expansion rates between the magnesium case and the steel head studs used. Number four, to fix that problem, Porsche used head studs made of Dillevar, an alloy which expanded at more or less the same rate as the engine case. Now, instead of head studs pulling out of engine cases, they broke instead. Number five, I mentioned that magnesium engine cases became porous to let engine oil escape, but that only applied to let to the oil that hadn't found its way into the outside world via any number of other exit points. Keeping oil on the inside of air-cooled 911s was always a challenge, and we'll come back to that topic shortly. Number six, with solid flywheels, the clutch friction disc takes the job of absorbing driveline harshness. The original clutch design for the 930 and G50 transmission used a rubber-centered clutch, which worked well enough at first. Eventually, heat and stress caused the rubber center to fall apart, at which point the car failed to proceed. Number seven, 1980s 911s had switchgear that looked very similar to contemporary VW Golf switchgear and appeared to have been ergonomically placed throughout the cabin by Stevie Wonder. Number eight, towards the end of the 3.2 Carrera's production, Porsche added engine under trays in an effort to civilize the cars by containing engine noise, which they did. And along with the engine noise, they also contained engine heat, which led to late 3.2s, 9.64s, and 9.93s cooking valve guides. Number nine, 9.93s have plastic rocker covers with metal inserts for the fasteners to tighten them against the cylinder head. Over time and with many heat cycles, the metal inserts detach themselves from the plastic valve covers and once again, oil finds its way to the outside world. Number 10, 993s have, or in many cases had, a vent pipe to vent the clutch bell housing to the air filter. This causes the air filter to get blocked with clutch dust. So there you have it, 10 things that would have had internet forums melting down with criticism of Porsche designs if only they'd existed. And I didn't even mention Sportomatics or Aircon in pre-964 cars. None of this should be taken as bagging air-cooled cars or sniping at Porsche. Anybody who wants a completely risk-free car should go and get themselves a beige Camry. But next time you hear somebody remind you that they don't make cars the way they used to, just point out, they wouldn't dare. If you disagree with anything I've said, please let me know in the comment section. And as ever, thank you for watching.